Nicoderm CQ. You know why, we know how. From right here where my stop, my mailbox, my mother's mailbox is there, it is at least two feet deep. And each time you go to a next, um, the next mailbox, you go and like you're dropping like two feet. Florence battering the Carolinas tonight. The massive storm still at it, bringing heavy rain, destructive flooding, a 10-foot storm surge. Neighborhoods underwater as we come on the air with you now. Tonight, our team remains out there covering it all. We have Mike Seidel along the North Carolina coast. Mike Bettis is on the South Carolina coast. And we have a team of storm trackers out in the field and a team of hurricane experts, including Carl Parker, here in our studio. We've got a lot to get to tonight as this massive storm slows down. We're getting some new video in from the conditions along the coast. This video just in a few hours ago along Carolina Beach storm surge of several feet pushing ashore, causing massive flooding along the coast. The heavy rain coming down in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina tonight. Here's a live look for you. Visibility is very poor and they're continuing to get gusty winds. We're going to check in with Mike Bettis there in just a few minutes. But first, Wilmington, North Carolina, also still getting hammered by Florence tonight. The Weather Channel's Mike Seidel is live there tonight and joins us now. Mike, how are conditions now? Hey Alex, it's almost impossible to hear you out here. It's hard to believe that we've been in this for about 24 hours. The wind still gusting upwards of 50 miles an hour. We had our first, we had our first squall last night at about 10:30, and it's been almost nonstop ever since. And you know now we're on the backside of the hurricane, so the wind's coming in from the southeast and south. Uh, last night. It was from the northwest that once the, the eye came right by us here, just across the bridge in Wrightsville, North Carolina, Wrightsville Beach, the winds came around in the northeast and pushed the water up. And we do have another high tide coming in uh, at midnight. We'll see if the surge comes up as high as it did today. We had uh, at least a four-foot surge out of Wrightsville Beach. That was the noon high tide. Uh, just a wild night out here. Driving over here, the visibility was down to about a block or so with this torrential driving uh, rain. There are trees down everywhere. And power, last time I looked, was out to over 800,000 customers uh, here in North Carolina. The real issue here is that the what was the hurricane, now tropical storm Florence, is just not moving. I was thinking back, I've covered about 70 tropical storms and hurricanes, and I've never seen this kind of wind and rain combo the magnitude of this combo continue for this many hours. Uh, this is uncharted territory for me. Usually hurricanes move faster, that we will get heavy rains, but the winds can die down as the system weakens. But as you can see, we're still in some very strong gusts over 60 miles an hour. And even though it's a tropical storm now, uh, the rain will be a big issue right on through a good part of the weekend. We should start to see things back off here in about 24 hours, but again, it's been a long uh, 24 hours here in uh, eastern North Carolina. Mike, I might Let's go explain, back to Atlanta. I might want to explain Alex? to our viewers. So Alex was actually uh, live in Wilmington as well. Her conditions were much calmer than uh, you have been experiencing, Mike. This is Jackie Jarrah. So you're just getting in now on one of those heavier rain bands that's been pushing in. How long has that been in your area? Oof. All right. I don't think Mike's able to hear me. I'm sure the winds. I'm sorry, uh, Dr. Navarro. It, it's Dr. Navarro. It's really hard to hear you out here, and I I couldn't understand your question. But uh, the rain bands here on at the intercoastal. Uh, you notice the flashing lights behind me. That's the. Uh, Police, Wilmington, Wrightsville Beach Police, they blocked off the access to the island. It was evacuated on Wednesday, and uh, nobody's allowed over there. So uh, some folks have been wondering why they're over there. That's what there are. That's, that's why they're over there. You go over that bridge, and you're on the uh, outer barrier island, and no doubt there's been tremendous amounts of erosion, and those beaches have been battered. Uh, in addition to the fact 
that there's probably been, you know, some some damage over there. Winds uh, earlier this morning gusted to 105 miles an hour at the Wilmington Airport, their second highest gust on record, going back uh, way, way back, about 100 years. All right. Dr. Thanks. Navarro. All right. Thanks so much, Mike Seidel. We'll get back with you and we'll let him know it's Jackie Jarrah's as well. Well, we want to get you updated about what we know right now. Tonight, nearly 900,000 customers are without power. The most are across North Carolina tonight with over 750,000 there in the dark. Five people now confirmed dead. A flash flood emergency is in effect, including New Bern, where hundreds of people were rescued and still more than 100 waiting to be rescued tonight. Wilmington, North Carolina, under a curfew right now. That went to, into effect at 10 o'clock tonight and will continue until 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. We want to get expert analysis now on Tropical Storm Florence, so we'll bring in our storm specialist, Carl Parker. Hey, Carl. You know, Jackie, the most rain that we've ever seen from a tropical cyclone is just over 24 inches. That was with Floyd in 1999, and I think it's all but certain that we are going to eclipse that record. This is a look at the latest rainfall totals in Newport. We've had 23 and a half inches and over 23 inches in Moorhead City. In those areas, that's where there's an ongoing flash flood emergency. We've heard about numerous water rescues, literally hundreds Hundreds of people being rescued there and homes and businesses and roads inundated in those areas and the rain is still coming down right now. So this is a larger look at the storm. There's the core which is now weakened to 65 miles per hour but it's still got punch as you saw with Mike Seidel's shot there. Still a lot of wind on either side of that in Wilmington as well as into South Carolina. A lot of reports of trees coming down near Columbia as well as into Charleston and here you see the band that is dry driving across Wilmington right in there. And so that's helping to transfer some of the stronger wind aloft down to the ground. And then we've been watching this band, uh, just terrific amounts of rain with that through the course of the day today. There's a look at the 24 hour rainfall. And this area of purple here is an area of 12 to 15 to eight inches. And we've actually got 18 to 21 in some pockets right in there. And again, you just saw the, re the reports there, 23 plus inches of rain. So it really has been a spectacular rainfall event and we've got a lot more on the way unfortunately over the next 24 hours here so again a flash flood emergency in effect for Carteret Craven and Pamlico counties that's going until nine o'clock in the morning if you are in trouble just get to a higher floor if you can and call 911 officials are out now and they're trying to rescue as many people as they possibly can Jones and Onslow counties under warning until 4 15 some of the heavier rain through here looking at rainfall rates of about two to three inches per hour. Another flash flood warning uh, or emergency to tell you about in Wayne County, and that is uh, going until 1230 in the morning. And we have gotten reports of five water rescues in Goldsboro so far this evening. And also looking at a flash flood warning now into Raleigh, North Carolina, as a few inches of rain have come down there. It looks like the rainfall rates are now beginning to step up just a little bit. So a lot of the state under flash flood warnings right now, and we've got such a long way to go in this event. This is looking at the rainfall going forward. So on top of the two feet of rain that we have had already, we are looking for as much as another foot to maybe foot and a half of rain over a pretty sizable area. This contour right here is a foot to a foot and a half of rain, additional rain centered around southern North Carolina and Wilmington and Fayetteville and down into parts of South Carolina as well. And so this thing is just going to crawl, slowly make its way across parts of South Carolina. And it looks like Wilmington is going to be in this heavy rain right through the day tomorrow. Let's go back out to Mike Seidel. And uh, Mike, uh, even as the wind starts to get a little bit better during the day tomorrow, I know it's still really going now. Uh, it's going to be a very wet day tomorrow. Would not be at all surprising to see a lot of flash flood problems there in Wilmington. Yeah, we're hoping that things begin to relax tomorrow as Florence finally pulls away slowly and then it will pick up some forward speed as we get late in the weekend and has more of a stirring flow. But uh, tonight, another uh, rocky night. And you know, even though we're not going to have wind gusts like we had this morning to 105 miles an hour, these 40, 50, even 60 mile hour gusts will continue to uproot more trees because the ground is so saturated. And the heavy weather moved into Myrtle Beach this morning. They've had upwards of five to six inches of rain uh, around the beach area just since uh, late this morning. Mike Bettis was there today, took quite a battering as we check in with him down the coast. 
Well, Florence has delivered a punch in the gut today here in the Grand Strand of South Carolina in Myrtle Beach. Incredibly gusty winds today. That's taken down power lines and trees, and we've got excessive power outages now uh, throughout South Carolina. The numbers have just gone up through the day and through the night. It was still very gusty winds overnight tonight, and torrential rain still coming down. We think those numbers are only going to climb. And now there's an ongoing concern that uh, the heavy rain is going to cause huge flood issues, not only potentially at the coast, in a place like Myrtle Beach, but inland as well. We'll be worried about the track of Florence in a place like Conway, a place like Florence, a place like Columbia could all have serious flood issues for at least the next 24 hours, if not longer than that. The problem is Florence is moving so slowly, it's taking its good old time getting out of here that we're going to have prolonged issues with the flooding. The thing about it also is this, as Florence moves away, we'll get the backside of Florence. Okay. That means the winds come down, gradually the rain tapers. However, we'll then get an onshore flow, whereas all day long today and through the night we'll have an offshore flow. Storm surge has been no issue whatsoever. Tomorrow it could be with an onshore flow that means the Atlantic Ocean comes up. Remember, we drain the water out of our river basins then our storm drains out to the Atlantic. So if the water's higher in the Atlantic, we can't effectively drain the rainwater and the flood water away, which means the flood waters could stay up in neighborhoods longer than you may normally expect, and then they may rise more than you would normally expect, especially with ongoing rain. Curfew still in effect, a seven to seven, and keep this in mind too, folks. Emergency services may not respond to your 911 call because the weather has been too poor for fire or police to respond to any 911 call. So you're hunkered down tonight, uh, you're without power, and in many instances, you're without water as well. That's the latest here in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. I'm meteorologist Mike Bettis. And fortunately for Myrtle Beach, the storm weakened. So the fact that when the eye wall in the area got, gets down in that area and the weather they've had, they're not getting the triple digit wind gust. Most of the wind gusts there have been clocked in between about 50 and 60 miles an hour, but still uh, over 80,000 customers without power in South Carolina. Let's go back to Atlanta. Jackie Jarris. Jackie, I apologize <laughs> for referring you, referring to you earlier as Dr. Erica Navarro. That You're is both okay. wonderful human beings. I was going to say, it's <laughs> not it's, an It's so hard to, to hear out friend. here. But, <laughs> I'm sure it's very and hard to hear out there. You've got the latest there. timing on. You've got the latest timing on the weather in Myrtle Beach and Wilmington, and when potentially this may begin to wind down, especially right here. Yeah. I mean, you, we're really looking at all weekend for the most part with the threat of rain and the threat of flooding for sure. And then the river flooding is going to go on uh, well beyond that throughout the week ahead. We'll start out with Wilmington where uh, Mike Seidel is right now. And you can expect to continue to see some of those strong wind gusts on the range of 65 plus miles per hour at times in that big feeder band that's pushing through there. And that could continue uh, well into tomorrow. Additional rainfall right now. 12 to 18 inches and that may very well be on the higher end of things depending on how long that band decides it wants to linger and I wouldn't rule out altogether uh, that a few spots around there in Wilmington could uh, see some higher numbers even than that it would be pretty localized however Myrtle Beach you're about halfway through your storm and now you're going to watch the impacts uh, change a little bit with those winds changing direction as we move into tomorrow so your wind gusts uh, in fact actually right now as that eye gets or the center really gets closer towards you may calm down for a minute but then you're going to get on the back side of it you watch the wind switch direction and we could see those strong gusts continuing uh, into Saturday night rainfall to come here about the same as Wilmington another foot to a foot and a half and then your storm surge comes in too uh, for your Saturday up to four feet uh, of surge so we still have many hazards and many threats Carl Parker joining us now for more and it's just it's just so hard to believe that you know we're talking record rain already yeah probably Probably the heaviest rainfall. I mean, we're almost there. I think we're less than an inch away from right. the heaviest tropical event in terms of rainfall accumulations. Yeah. And to think that that number, you know, could almost be doubled. 
Well, you know, I, I don't know if it will be there necessarily, but I think in, in some parts of the state we could be talking about 30 inches. Yes, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we're probably going to watch the heaviest uh, arc of rain, the heaviest band of rain move a little farther southwest uh, into tomorrow. I want to show you the model forecast here. This is one of our high resolution models. And, you know, these things are not always perfect, but they give you a rough idea of how things may go down. And so let's take this through Saturday and you can see how it's sort of centered there around uh, Wilmington and the southern part of North Carolina and then up into the Triangle as well. And then we watch all that rain get up here into the 85 corridor. That's going into Sunday as it's winding down in those areas that have been hit so hard. The Outer Banks there in the eastern part of North and South Carolina moves over into upstate North Carolina, upstate South Carolina. And the problem there is that even if the rainfall rates are coming down at that time, the terrain is dramatically increasing and terrain can really amplify a flash flood threat. So that is going to be a very big concern late in the weekend. So tomorrow into Sunday morning, this is where the flood threat is going to be centered. And then as we go from Sunday morning into Monday morning, it will move more up into the western parts of North Carolina. Jackie, over to you. All right, Carl, we'll stay with the Weather Channel for continuing coverage as tropical storms Florence continues to pound the Carolina coast. We have a team of meteorologists spread out up and down the East Coast covering every angle of this storm. Enhance your moments. San Pellegrino, tastefully Italian. In just days, Publishers Clearing House awards the $2,500 a week forever prize. Win $2,500 a week for your life. Then after that, someone you choose gets $2,500 a week for their life. Don't miss your final chance to win. Enter at PCH.com and October 26th, win forever. Do you suffer aches and pains from poor circulation? Are tired, aching legs stopping you from enjoying life? You don't have to suffer any longer. Relieve your aches and pains with Revitive Medic Circulation Booster, a new drug-free home treatment cleared by the FDA that significantly improves circulation in your legs and feet. Just one relaxing session a day and you'll feel back in control. Medical conditions, age, or inactivity can cause poor circulation. The result, aches and pains that ruin your everyday life. Only Revitive Medic's patented wide pulse waveform stimulate the nerve endings in your feet to get your lower leg muscles pumping and actively improve your circulation, relieve your aches and pains, and strengthen your leg muscles. I have tried everything to get rid of my pain and nothing has worked like Revitive and even better it's not a drug. My granddaughter asked me to dance with her. Well I can't <laughs> turn down my granddaughter right so I danced two long dances with her and I would never have been able to do that without Revitive. It makes a, a big difference quality of life. It's nice to have that filling back and have the control back. Award-winning design makes Revitive Medic easy to use. Just place your feet on the foot pads and increase the intensity using the remote control. In minutes, you'll be enjoying relief as Revitive's clinically proven impulses take your aches and pains away. Discover why 94 out of 100 people who try Revitive keep it because it works. Try risk-free with our 60-day money-back guarantee. If Revitive Medic doesn't relieve your aches and pains, return it and we'll refund the purchase price, the shipping, and even pay the return shipping. That's how confident we are in the power of Revitive. Call 1-800-956-0509 or go to tryrevitive.com right now. That's 1-800-956-0509. You don't have to live with pain. You just have to take the leap and try Revitive. Season after season, year after year, customers have found that when it comes to replacing their windows, there's only one company to call, Renewal by Anderson. Call 1-800-352-3613 now. So what makes Renewal by Anderson so good? Fibrex material, an innovative composite material exclusive to Anderson that provides strength and durability, far surpassing vinyl. In fact, it won't warp or bow over time like vinyl does. Get the window replacement solution proven to stand the test of time, plus the peace of mind that comes from a superior service experience. That's Renewal by Anderson. Call 1-800-352-3613 today and get 20% off your entire order with this exclusive TV offer. Again, that's 800-352-3613 for 20% off. Plus, get no money down, no interest, and no payments for 12 months. 
Okay. Renewal by Anderson, the better way to a better window. Call 1-800-352-3613 now. The only Emmy-nominated weather network on cable. When this much rain falls, it is a life-threatening situation. Is the most essential coverage on TV. Currently in our area, 75 degrees under fair skies. Tonight, some clouds this evening will give way to mainly clear skies overnight. Low, 67. Winds light and variable. Saturday, sunny along with a few clouds. High, 89. Winds southeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Saturday night, a mostly clear sky. Low, 65. Winds light and variable. Here's our seven day outlook. Welcome back to our coverage of Tropical Storm Florence. We have a new tornado warning to tell you about right now in Carteret and Jones in Onslow County. We've had quite a few tornado warnings here, and this is the very same county where there has been a flash, or same, same counties where there have been flash flood emergencies in effect uh, through a lot of the evening. A lot of reports of homes and businesses being flooded out. Let's take a look at the velocity data. We've got a couple of little circulations showing up right in here and right in there. Uh, these things tend to be very transient in nature. They're also moving really quickly. So let's just take that forward. Uh, that's going to be coming towards Maysville here at about 1138. Swansboro in the next couple of minutes. Silverdale 1127. Morton Fork at 1132. And you could argue that there are some other little swirls that are farther north as well. Uh, maybe one there just north of Richlands. And uh, that too also moving to the northwest. So let's just take that forward. And that'll be coming up towards Irving's Crossroads and Woodington in the next few minutes here. So again, these tend to be very transient in nature. Oftentimes you'll see it pop up for one scan and then uh, before you know it, it's gone. But certainly they can be uh, damaging tornadoes. And there is an extension on the tornado watch. The area has been changed a little bit now more towards southern North Carolina, Jackie. And that going until 7 o'clock in the morning. Over here. Yeah, and probably that tornado threat continuing into the weekend as yeah. well. Well, we want to take you to Raleigh, North Carolina. Carolina right now where the rain continues to come down. Uh, you are under a flash flood warning for all of Wake County, including the city of Raleigh. Up to three inches of rain uh, being estimated to have fallen here already. Road closures have been reported in Wake Forest, and that warning is going to continue until 1245 uh, local time as well. We want to head back over towards Wilmington, North Carolina, to our own Mike Seidel, who is live there. And Mike, you've been enduring some of those really heavy rain bands here in the last uh, 30 minutes or so. Yes, and a bit of a break from the wind right now, but it just comes uh, and hits you without notice. The rain backed off just for a minute. Notice on the radar, there is a break between here. You go up the coast to Sneeds Ferry. Notice there was a little dry area, but there's another wide band, that outer band that has been affecting Moorhead City earlier now, more so over the Emerald Isle and extending in towards Jacksonville and Cape Lejeune. Camp Lejeune. So we have a long way to go because simply, as we've told you, uh, the tropical storm, former hurricane Florence, is only moving at about three miles an hour. Uh, most of you can probably, I know I can power walk faster than that. So it's a pretty slow movement. It will pick up some forward speed as we get later in the weekend and early next week heading into the Appalachians and then making a right turn and heading north. But in the meantime, a lot of heavy rain in its path. And we've seen a lot of this around the city of Wilmington. A lot of shingles blown off roofs. Uh, as far as serious structural damage, we haven't seen that. We've seen some gas station awnings come down. Uh, we saw the awning at the bridge tender restaurant that came down uh, during the uh, eye wall as it came through here uh, early this morning. A lot of trees down, a lot of power out across uh, parts of the Carolinas, again, close to the coast. And it'll be a while, Jackie, before they can get those bucket trucks up. Duke Power, Duke Energy now has a lot of crew stationed from here and out of state. Florida Power came up from Florida, mm -hmm. but they can't get the bucket trucks up until the wind dies down. That may not be until Sunday. Oof. 
Yeah, long ways to go still with this storm. Thanks, Mike. Tropical storm Florence slammed into the North Carolina coast, leaving its mark on communities across parts of the state. New Bern, just east of Moorhead City, seeing some of the worst flooding from the storm. The community sits along the Noose River, which quickly burst from its banks, bringing storm surge up to 12 feet into the town. And those who did not evacuate New Bern were quickly overtaken by the rising waters. Swift water rescue teams and other first responders rescued hundreds of people, taking them to higher grounds as Florence unleashed heavy rain. Rescue efforts are ongoing as teams continue searching flooded areas along the coast. Well, let's get the latest on Florence, which is continuing to just kind of lumber its way into South Carolina now. Carl Parker, what you watching right now? Well, you know, it's amazing how uh, there are parts of the hurricane or the tropical storm that can be so damaging that are well away from the core of the system. This is looking at the loop here over the last 24 hours. And you can watch as the core comes across Wilmington very slowly. We saw 100 mile per hour winds, but it's this big arm of rain right here that has caused a lot of the problems tonight well away from that center. We've gotten just terrific rain with that, and we'll see that again tomorrow. Now, this is our forecast for the rain to come, and we've got a really sizable area of 8 to 12 in red, and then this area of 12 to 18 inches of rain, that's in the pink right there. I will tell you that there is some model guidance that's showing some values that are a good bit higher than that. So it is possible that we could be looking at some values that are much higher than that. I wouldn't say that that's unreasonable because that big arm of rain that we just talked about is going to be basically stuck over southern North Carolina right through the day tomorrow. So flash flooding is very likely in Wilmington, in Fayetteville, in Myrtle Beach, and getting over towards Columbia as well. And our live team coverage of Tropical Storm Florence continues right here on the Weather Channel on the other side of the break. Guys, is this you? Busting out of your pants? Out of shape? No energy or drive? Then you need Nutrisystem for men. I'm Chris, and I lost 120 pounds on Nutrisystem. I'm Essex, and I lost 43 pounds on Nutrisystem. Lose up to 18 pounds and 8 inches overall in your first month. Money back guarantee. Real guys, real results. Put down the wings, pick up the phone, and get with the program today. Order your 28-day plan now and save 40% off every program. That's 40% off breakfast, lunches, dinners, and snacks. For a limited time, save 40 40%. Plus, get one week of all new NutriPro shakes, packed with 20 grams of protein to help shrink your gut free. The food was delicious. I love the food. Pasta, pizza, so good. Plus, we'll throw in FedEx shipping free. It was perfect for guys like me who don't like to cook. Lose up to 18 pounds and 8 inches overall in your first month. It's simple. You eat the food, you lose the weight. Go online or call 888-648-DIET and get free shakes plus 40% off every program. Children shouldn't have to battle cancer, but they do. My name is Abby, and I have Ewing sarcoma. St. Jude is trying to make it go away. My name is Randell, and I have leukemia. I just finished my high dose of chemo. You can join the battle to save lives by supporting St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Our son was diagnosed with a medullary brain tumor. I remember hoping that he would make it to his first birthday. Families never receive a bill from St. Jude for treatment, travel, housing, or food. Because all a family should worry about is helping their child live. Please call or go online right now and become a St. Jude Partner in Hope for only $19 a month. You don't realize the magnitude of how much you've really helped somebody. You know, I just want to say thank you. One in five children diagnosed with cancer will not survive. I didn't want any other parents to have to go through this. I don't know where we would be without this hospital. When you join with your credit or debit card right now, we'll send you this St. Jude t-shirt you can wear to show your support for the children of St. Jude. St. Jude gives you all of that hope back. They gave me my daughter back. St. Jude won't stop until no child dies from cancer. These children fight hard. They fight for their life. And I don't think we could do it without you. 
Please, call or go online right now. We're forecasting maybe 40 inches or more of rain from this system. We could be doubling our rainfall record here as far as the tropical system is concerned in the state of North Carolina. Well, I would characterize the flood threat as the most life-threatening aspect of this. If the storm hasn't reached you yet, it's still coming. Some of the incredible images and important information and quotes from Florence, which is now a tropical storm, but the threat isn't over. The slow moving storm is still pounding the Carolina coast with damaging winds and heavy rain. Florence made landfall this morning near Wilmington, North Carolina, as a category one hurricane. The storm surge caused flooding in coastal areas and winds knocked out power to more than 100,000 customers. Our live coverage of tracking Florence continues right now. We're so glad you're staying up with us to get some more information. Our meteorologist Jackie Jarris, we've got storm specialist Carl Parker with us. He's gonna join us in just a minute about where Florence is headed. That's coming up shortly. But first, we wanna go live to the Weather Channel's Mike Seidel. And Mike is in Wilmington, North Carolina. And Mike, you've been kind of intermittent in and out of some of these gusty bands. What are conditions like right now? Yeah, we've got a break right now, Jackie, thank goodness. This is about as light as the winds have been that I've stood in since yesterday morning, and we've been at it morning, noon, and night. Uh, so looking back, uh, when you drive around Wilmington, what you notice right away, a lot of trees down. Take a look, uh, some of the video from around the city uh, here in uh, southeastern North Carolina, and that is why so much power is out. 744,000 customers in North Carolina and in South Carolina now 157,000 customers. So between the two states, uh, we're up close to a million customers without power. And I think some of those numbers certainly in South Carolina will go up as stronger winds work inland. But the winds will slowly decrease over the next day or so. That's going to help things out as the rainfall continues to add up. We could see another half a foot or foot of rain right here. And we've already had upwards of 20 inches of rain in eastern North Carolina across the uh, bridge where the uh, policemen are over in Riceville Beach. Uh, they reported over 18 inches of rain at lunchtime today. No telling how much more they picked up. But I'm not going to be surprised. We may already have at Moorhead City broken the record rainfall for North Carolina for a tropical cyclone set 19 years ago during Hurricane Floyd down in uh, Brunswick County in the town or near the town of Southport. Let's go back inside to Carl Parker. Carl, this thing is not moving fast enough for anybody. I don't think there's anybody on the planet that would like to see this thing move a whole lot faster. Yeah, and it's been really tough across parts of North Carolina tonight. Uh, we've got some new flash flood emergencies to tell you about right now. The area of concern has been this big band, which is barely moved. This is a loop over the last three hours, and you can see how little that band has moved over that time. So we've had an ongoing flash flood emergency in Carteret and Craven counties already. That's been going on for a while. We've gotten reports of hundreds of rescues, homes and businesses and roads being impassable, uh, homes and businesses covered by water and there that's going until nine o'clock in the morning now off to the west and you can see where the band is it's kind of moved out of Craven and Carteret counties and into Jones and Oslo County so there's a new flash flood emergency in effect here and uh, we are getting reports of as much as 18 inches of rain and an additional five to ten inches possible through the night tonight so you're talking about possibly getting as much as nearly 30 inches of rain in this area and uh, it's just been uh, an awful situation uh, a lot of very serious uh, impacts here across much of the coastal area of north carolina and then also duplin jones onslow counties under a flash flood emergency that's going until 4 30 in the morning so it is just getting very very bad there with that one band in particular as it just slowly moves off into the east also a flash flood warning for uh, wake county franklin county going until 12 45 in the morning now where is all this going to go tomorrow 
Well, it's going to move a little farther away. So we're going to begin to bring down some of those totals in those areas where we're seeing so much of it right now. But it's going to take some time to do that. But eventually, eventually we're going to watch it move more towards southern North Carolina and also into South Carolina. Now we're going to have the very same problem in those areas that we've been seeing today as the band continues to feed in, grabs all that Atlantic moisture and continues to drive it into parts of southern North Carolina. So look at the model forecast. I want you to focus on this area right here. So right in there. Now this, this model is showing us uh, 1230 in the morning. And so, you know, it's not initializing real, real well because it's not showing us all of what's happening farther to the east. Nonetheless, it can be instructive in terms of the motion of the storm. And if you focus on this area from Wilmington into Fayetteville, we take it forward going through tomorrow morning into the middle of the day, the afternoon, the evening into Sunday morning, and then finally, by the middle of the day on Sunday, finally it begins to let up. So what we'll likely see out of that is a terrific amount of rainfall, and it may be on the order of a foot to a foot and a half and maybe a couple of feet. So where we've had so many problems with, with flash flooding and flash flood emergencies tonight near Moorhead City and areas north and west, that area of concern, of greatest concern, is going to shift tomorrow and into uh, Saturday, through the day Saturday and early Sunday, into Wilmington, Fayetteville, and also towards Myrtle Beach and towards Columbia. And then we'll shift into the mountains, into Western North Carolina, Sunday morning and going through Monday morning. Much more on Florence coming up in a moment. At Land's End, comfort is in our genes. We build in features that matter, like a no-gap waist, improved stretch, and jeans for men that put comfort first with Flex built in. No matter how much walking, sitting, dancing, or jumping through hoops your day requires, you're going to look and feel amazing. Guaranteed. Period. The moment you realize you're lucky your backyard is in the back. At Lowe's, we have everything you need to keep your yard looking great. Shop Lowe's and get four one-quart mums for $10. As animal lovers, we assume that everyone is going to treat animals kindly. When you realize that that's not the case, it's shocking. Animals are abused in so many ways. Sometimes seeing the cruelty and what happens to these animals is almost too painful, too painful to watch. You can look at those images and just be so angry that anyone could do that to an animal. Animals are abused every day, and they can't ask for help. They endure indescribable acts of violence, but they're without a voice without a voice to say they're frightened and in pain. They're alone, they're scared, and they need your help. Visit us at joinaspca.org or call this number now and sign up with your monthly donation. The situation is urgent, so please don't delay. It's only 63 cents a day, and you'll help rescue animals who are suffering. Do it in the next 10 minutes, and we'll send you the photo of an animal from our shelter and a free ASPCA t-shirt. When you look directly into their eyes, you do see into their heart all of the suffering, all of the pain. If they had a voice, they would say, please help me. These animals don't have any way out. They don't have any escape. They need people like us to actually be the ones to stand up and say, I will help you. It's a painful and horrifying life for these animals. But for just 63 cents a day, you can change everything. It could be the most important thing you do today. Please sign up now. That's a mini wheat. Delicious. But it's more than that. Ten layers of crunchy wheat to fill you up on big days. Whether your day involves steam, mountains, or whoa, fire, we've got your breakfast right here. Is your breakfast built for big days? This is um, not the end of it. Uh, 24 to 36 hours remain of a, of a significant threat. 
uh, from heavy rain, heavy surge, not just in North Carolina, but obviously down as we move into South Carolina. Well, take a look at this. We've got new video as Hurricane Florence started to make its way into Myrtle Beach. A few police officers stopped to rescue some American flags. The flags lined the street, but the wind and the rain were starting to tear them apart. The officers took action to stop that from happening and took each flag down and took the time to properly fold them. The officers took the flags back to the Myrtle Beach Police Department to dry them out and properly dispose of any that were torn. Across North Carolina, hundreds had to be rescued as water rose and trees came crashing down. In an emotional rescue, NBC's Lester Holt was there as firefighters went to pull a mother and her baby from a home. As massive trees uprooted across the region, crashing into streets and homes, firefighters knew that calls like this would be inevitable this morning. Unfortunately, we have a, uh, a very, very large tree that's taken off the back corner of this house. Uh, we've been involved in the extrication of several victims for a number of hours now. Three people, a couple and their eight-month-old baby trapped. Firefighters desperately working to clear a path to the victims who they could hear and speak to. At least one pinned by debris. We have as a plan B requested a surgical team out here to help us in case uh, an amputation is required. As firefighters work to save them, loved ones arrived on the scene. Oh my God, no! <laughs> overwhelmed by the situation. And then finally, some good news. The father freed and rushed to the hospital. After we saw that first victim come out on the gurney conscious and talking to paramedics, we held our breaths hoping we would see two more victims successfully taken out. Instead, after a few minutes, firefighters began to file out and their faces said it all. A rescue effort had become a grim recovery. By the time they reached the mother and baby, it was too late. It hits home for all of us. I mean, regardless if, if, if you have kids or not, if you have a family or not, um, it's a human life. They saved one life. But then, in a powerful and touching moment, first responders huddled to pray for those they couldn't save. We were all touched watching your firefighters gather together in, in prayer. What is this like for them? Well, it's tough. You know, they're, they've been out here a good little while trying to rescue this one person. So, um, you know, they're out here. They're under a lot of stress. They don't even know the condition of their own homes or their own families. So it's a difficult situation for all of us. Putting not only their lives on the line, but also their emotions. There have been three other deaths reported due to Florence. That brings the total now up to five. Well, check out this video that we have. This was shot during high tide earlier today. Ocean waves pounding a home in Southport, North Carolina, a few miles north of Carolina Beach. Storm surge pushed the seawater into the town, covering roads and flooding businesses. When the next high tide rolls in, which is right around midnight, uh, the flooding is expected to get worse. Once a healthy section of dunes in Avon, North Carolina, now wiped out as Florence battered the East Coast. This video shows the devastation this morning after the storm made landfall. Life-threatening storm surge and flooding are expected to persist through the night. Well, Florence officially made landfall at 7.15 this morning near Wrightsville Beach, North Carolina. The Weather Channel's Jim Cantori and Stephanie Abrams were live as the center of the eye moved on shore. Take a look. Steph, are there, are there areas where you can see as you look at the buildings that uh, there may be some water intrusion just because of the, of the windswept rain that's coming in, or is everything pretty much boarded up and sandbagged up there? Jim, I will say everything is boarded and sandbagged. I have not seen now. There are a couple businesses across the way. I'm not sure if you can see them because the rain's coming down so hard that do not have boards. So, Jim, what I will do for you is I'm gonna, I'll run across the street. You can take it here. I'll run across the street and see if the water is seeped in where the people have not put sandbags. Steph, are you there? Are you, did, you come, did you come back yet? Jim, I do have an update for you. Yeah. I'm coming back. By the way, okay. that eye, I just spoke to our weather producer. The center of circulation is about five miles now from us, okay? So in theory, it should take about another hour okay. to get into it if it's moving five miles an hour, right? Right. So right around that, just keep that in mind as you're out there. Yes. And when I went yep. and looked, you know what I realized, Jim? All the stores here on Front Street, they're tucked back in. So it's a little bit of a saving grace that they're not right on the street, right? They all are kind of tucked in, so they have a little protection. So right now, from what I can see, they're okay. 
And that's great news, Stephanie, because, you know, a lot of times when we ask people to evacuate and leave, they will watch us to kind of see what's going on. Uh, and it's nice to give them an update. This tree went down way early on, Jim, when we were just gusting more in that like 70, 60, 70 mile an hour range. So it doesn't take a lot for damage. And this yeah. is why, you exactly. know, in the category one, you still have to board up. You still have to board up and be prepared. Absolutely. You're right, Steph. It's not so much the, the, the wind and how much you get, it's the debris that comes down. And like you said, it came down when the long before the wind was 105 miles per hour. I'm, here's what I'm going to say right now. If somebody gets 40, 45 yeah. inches, it wouldn't surprise me. What do you think? Uh, two things, Jim. You know, two things. If this thing does go back fully over water, you know, don't be shocked for this thing to, you know, get its act a little better together because the eye kind of collapsed when it came on shore and it does that with the friction second of all jim the water you're standing in is that strictly from rain or are yes. you getting the river coming out of its banks or just overwatch what caused that water this is uh this is rain water this is rain water that's either falling up where you are uh probably near where we are that's trying to get out and it is Wow, some of the highlights from today from Jim and Stephanie both and Carl Parker joining us now, Carl. And you know, Stephanie said something in there that was really telling to me about how all this damage and look at this tree from category one, all that surge from yeah. category one. And right. so we really kind of have to look at, you know, the message sometimes that's being sent when we put out these categories because not every storm is created equally. A category one can cause a lot of destruction. Absolutely. You know, so much attention is paid to the category and, you know, rightly so to some extent because obviously a category four or five storm is really intense in terms of wind damage, but right. you can have a category one or a category two storm that's really large and really slow moving that can be every bit as destructive. And that's right. exactly what we've got in this case. I mean, th this story is far from over. Yeah, at if this we point. called it rainfall only, you could almost call it a category five rainfall storm. Exactly right? right. I mean, that's that's part of the problem is it's hard to categorize storms in a way that includes all of those impacts. Mm -hmm. It's a very difficult thing. Right now, we just do it by wind. Uh, I want to show you that we've got uh, a flash flood emergency in effect now for Carteret, Craven, Pamlico, but now the county to the west as well. Jones and Onslow counties also under a flash flood emergency. Officials are asking that you not leave your homes. We'll have more on this coming up on the other side of the break. For those who thirst for more, Coors Light is colder, cleaner, and crisper. To refresh you for what's next, Coors Light the world's most refreshing beer. You can drink, eat well, and exercise, but to look completely healthy, you need healthy skin. Cetaphil Water Light Moisturizers immediately rehydrate skin for continuous hydration, day and night. Complete your healthy routine with Cetaphil. In just days, Publishers Clothing House awards the $2,500 a week forever prize. Win $2,500 a week for your life. Then after that, someone you choose gets $2,500 a week for their life. Don't miss your final chance to win. Enter at PCH.com on October 26th. Win forever. I'm missing out on our family outings because I can't find a bladder leakage product that fits. Everything was too loose. But Depend FitFlex feels tailored to me. Introducing more sizes for better comfort. New Depend FitFlex underwear is guaranteed to be your best fit. Season after season, year after year, customers have found that when it comes to replacing their windows, there's only one company to call. Renewal by Anderson. Call 1-800-352-3613 now. So what makes Renewal by Anderson so good? Fibrex material, an innovative composite material exclusive to Anderson that provides strength and durability, far surpassing vinyl. In fact, it won't warp or bow over time like vinyl does. Get the window replacement solution proven to stand the test of time, plus the peace of mind that comes from a superior service experience. That's Renewal by Anderson. Call 1-800-352-3613 today and get 20% off your entire order with this exclusive TV offer. Again, that's 800-352-3613 for 20% off. Plus, get no money down, no interest, and no payments for 12 months. Renewal by Anderson, the better way to a better window. Call 1-800-352-3613 now. Breaking news for the National Hurricane. All the rain in the forecast created the opportunity for the perfect crime. Storm of Suspicion premieres October 7th. 
colon cancer screening for people 50 and older at average risk. I think it's time for a new screen, for a different kind of screen, for colon cancer. Thought about it? His wife asked about screening options, and her doctor ordered me. I'm Colagar, the non-invasive test you use at home. No special drink, just a trip to the bathroom. Colagar, colon cancer screening that's as easy as get, go, gone. Colagar is not right for everyone, so ask your doctor if it's right for you. Currently in our area, 74 degrees under clear skies. Tonight, some clouds this evening will give way to mainly clear skies overnight. Low, 67. Winds light and variable. Saturday, sunny along with a few clouds. High, 89. Winds southeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Saturday night, a mostly clear sky. Low, 65. Winds light and variable. Here's our seven-day outlook. To those in the storm's past, path, if you can hear me, please stay sheltered in place. Do not go out in this storm. The Weather Service says flash flooding will be extreme and flood waters will come up quickly and seemingly out of nowhere. And you can't see it uh, after the sun goes down, right? Well, it's not just people, it's pets. Watch this as a group of strangers came across two stranded dogs trapped by rising water in Jacksonville, North Carolina. trying to jump off I yeah, think we're all right. Put, put them towards the back. I was getting antsy. I couldn't couldn't do it any longer because I knew people needed help. So if you got the right stuff to do it, we've got saws, we've got uh, you know rescue gear, we've got equipment. Use it, you know? So you wanna try to um, chain them? Come here. Come on, bro. It's okay. So great to see a happy ending out of that one. I'm sure those dogs were very scared. So nice to see that um, they were rescued. I'm sure there are a lot of uh, pet issues. You know, not, not every shelter takes pets, unfortunately. So it's hard to know sometimes what to do with them. You really got to plan ahead. Um, we want to get over to our storm specialist, Carl Parker, who is also an animal lover, as I know. Mm -hmm. Tracking Florence, what's the latest? What you watching? Well, you know, there's a new flash flood emergency. We've been watching this one band as it's been coming into areas near uh, Moorhead City.
City, and you see it right here on the radar, uh, just west of Cape Lookout. So right there, that band has been the one that has produced so far as much as 18 inches of rain. As a matter of fact, uh, over the course of the last day or so, we've had as much as 23 and a half inches of rain here, and a lot more on the way, unfortunately. So an ongoing flash flood emergency for Craven, Carteret, and Pamlico counties. You know, part of the issue here also near the sound is that we've had water being driven into the west side of the sound, some surge there. And so as the rain has been building up, we've had these tremendous rainfall rates. Rain would normally escape into the rivers and out into the sound, and it's not as able to do that because of the piling up of the water that's going on. Now, this banding has moved a little more to the west over the last several hours, and now Jones and Onslow counties are under a flash flood emergency. I want to tell you about some of the language that we're hearing from uh, the National Weather Service here. They are saying it is imperative that residents remain off the roads and only venture outside if there is a threat to your well-being. So do not leave your house unless there is a threat to your well-being. That's how serious it is getting now in Jones and Oslo counties. And, uh, you know, we're looking at some rainfall rates here approaching four inches per hour. So you think about that. We've already had 18 inches of rain, and you've got rain coming down at a rate of two to three to four inches per hour. So this is unfortunately a tragedy that is unfolding before our eyes here in parts of North Carolina. We can only hope that there are people that are getting to safety at this point, but uh, we know that there's a lot of, are gonna be a lot of problems on the ground there. Uh, Wayne County also under a flash flood emergency until 1230 in the morning. And in Raleigh now, we've had about three to five inches of rain, and we're hearing some reports of some high water on some of the roads here too. The rainfall rates have actually been stepping up in this area. So, Jackie, uh, looking at the model going forward, I think the, the area of heaviest rain is likely going to move more towards southern North Carolina, where we're looking for 12 to 18 inches additionally. Some of the models, there are a few models that print out a whole lot more than that. So I think there is some potential right. if the band sits there all day tomorrow and then early Sunday, I think there's some potential that we'll see even more than that, maybe more than a couple of feet. Hard to believe, right? Yeah. All right, so one of the big concerns uh, going forward are the winds to go along with some of that rain, right? Our winds have died down pretty significantly. Here's a look at some of the peak gusts that we had already. Cape Lookout at 106 miles per hour, Wilmington at 105. Uh, Cape Fear joining that Century Club uh, right at 100 miles per hour. It's been more than 24 hours that you've had at least at a minimum tropical storm force winds in Wilmington. But going forward, you know, all it's going to take is some of these tropical storm force wind gusts to cause issues with the trees coming down because that ground gets so very saturated that you can see a buoy with the uh, wind gusts almost 50 miles per hour still at this time. Well, we are going to continue our live coverage of Hurricane Florence through the weekend. If you have a power outage or if you're traveling, you can listen to the Weather Channel on Sirius XM. That's channel 145. Continue coverage after this. 911 emergency. My husband is having trouble breathing. First responders hear it alive. 